Hello, it's Chelsea, and welcome to my studio. I'm an artist with Think360 Arts, and today we are going to be making some unique paintings using common kitchen tools and cooking ingredients, such as turmeric, curry powder, cayenne, hot sauce, and even coffee and tea. So get ready, and let's get started. First, we need to collect all of our materials from our houses. I'm going to explain to you everything that we need, and then I'll give you a little bit of a break so you can go and scavenge your homes for all the things that we're gonna need for this activity. First and foremost, we need paper. So the paper that I'm using is actually recycled paper. It is the back side of an already printed piece of paper. So if you have old worksheets or homework assignments that you want to use, you can always just flip those over and use that clear blank side. Um, otherwise, you can grab some lined paper from a notebook, you can grab some printer paper, or if you have some really nice art paper, like watercolor paper, that will work out really well for this activity. Um, if you want to grab three to four pieces of that paper, that is going to be perfect. Second thing we need is some containers, because we're going to be mixing pigment. Now pigment is simply another word for a color that you can paint with or dye with. So we're basically going to be mixing various kitchen um, ingredients and putting water with those and mixing them up into a pigment that we can paint with or stain the page with. So I have these adorable little cups. Look how cute that is. Woo! It's so cute. Um, I'm going to be mixing my pigments in here. If you don't have these, which I don't expect anyone to, um, we can be using Tupperwares. So if you have um, three or four different smaller, but just Tupperwares in general, you can also just grab a jar or a, a glass or a mug, um, a couple of those to mix our colors. It's easier if it's clear so you can kind of see what the color is looking like and if you need to add any more water. Next, we actually need to source our pigment. So I scavenged through my spice drawer and I found a couple different spices that I think are going to work really well for creating some watercolors with kitchen supplies. Um, first I found turmeric powder, turmeric or even curry powder. Now if you see how yellow that is, that is going to probably give us some really nice color on our page. So I'm going to work with the turmeric or the curry for sure. Uh, oh yeah, here's the curry. It's kind of this more yellowish color. I also found cayenne, which if you look at it, the powder of it is super bright. It's almost like a bright orange or red. Um, so I'm going to see what happens when I mix water with this and if I can get a color that will stay in the page. You can also use vegetables or fruits. Um, try like if you have a blueberry or a raspberry, a blackberry. Now of course you want to save that stuff for eating, so maybe only take a couple berries to try steaming our pages with. Um, but those can potentially be some really beautiful like pinks and purples. Um, beets also have a ton of color in them, so if you have any beets in your refrigerator, um, or even some like fruit juice. You can try lots of different things. Just see what you find and add a little bit of some things to our cups that we are acquiring. And lastly, uh, I have some salt here because I'm gonna use the salt on some of the like watercolor pages. So if you wanna bring some salt with you to play with, that's awesome. Some water, I'm bringing my water with me in a water bottle, um, that way I can mix it as I go at my table instead of going to the sink and accidentally pouring way too much water in my cup. I'm going to have a pen with me because I'm going to make a test strip and I want to label my test strip so I remember what is what. And lastly, what are we going to be painting with? That's a great question. Uh, I have, of course, I have a ton of paintbrushes in my studio, so I can I can grab a paintbrush, but I wanted to challenge myself and all of you because some people don't have paintbrushes at home. I am going to be doing this whole painting using just a spoon and a fork. So, 
If you're ready, go ahead. You can put this video on pause while you go and scavenge your homes for those ingredients. I'll put a list up right after this page here so you can remember what you're looking for. And once you have all of your materials ready to go at your table, come on back, press play, and I'll see you then. Now that you have all your materials, we are going to be making a test strip or a test piece of paper of all of our different pigments. So what you need to grab first is a paper, a pen, and then let's grab those spices, those cups and that water and we're going to mix up our pigments. Okay, so first thing we have to do is mix our pigment. Um, I'm going to be making pigment today out of turmeric root powder, some cayenne powder, and I'm going to also make some beet juice and coffee. So what I want everyone to remember is we, a little bit goes a long way. So I have this tiny, tiny little cup. So if you're using something bigger than this, remember um, only a little bit. And if you want to actually use a spoon to help you measure, you can do that as well with your spices. You can be like, all right, this looks like about a half and I'm going to put it into my, my little cup. All right, then using a water bottle or another cup of water, you're going to add probably like one or two spoonfuls to begin with, super, super small amount. But this is a lot of pigment and this will last us a long time. I'm gonna use my fork, and just stir it up, make sure all of the dry powder is good there. All right, and I'm gonna put that aside. Next, I'm going to mix the cayenne. Of the pigments that I made. This was beet juice and this was the turmeric powder. See how brightly colored those are? So I have my pigments. They are ready to go. I have my utensils ready to go. I'm also going to have one more little cup of just water so I can kind of wash my utensils as needed. If you wanted to bring some hot sauce into the mix, you can do that. Oh, and I have my salt as well. So the first thing we have to do is our test strip. And using a marker or a Sharpie of some kind, I'm going to write down, I'm going to use a paintbrush because I have one. I'm going to say brush here. I'm going to say spoon. And I'm going to say four. And then on the horizontal, I'm going to put our pigments. So the first one here, we had turmeric. The next one is cayenne. The next one is coffee. And the last one is beet juice. Now we can explore. So. Take a little bit of my fork here. I'm going to stir this up again because it kind of gets sedimented and separated. And for the fork, I found that it's really fun to just play with wine and dot. So you can literally just hit the paper, dip and tap. And make lots of different polka dots. You can also try making lines, making crisscrosses. This is just to see what it looks like when it dries. Oops. Now I'm going to use the spoon. Do the same thing, kind of stir it up. I want to see if I can make like a nice swath of color here. 
which it looks like I can, but I also want to see if I can make lines and what the lines will look like. So using the edge of the spoon, the tip of the spoon. How thin can I make it? How thick can I make it? That kind of thing. And lastly, using a painting brush. I'm going to stir this up. And this is going to show us what just like the general color of the swath will look like. It's kind of cool and interesting. Some of the, the writing from the other side of my paper is coming through. I like that. All right. So, I'm going to repeat that step for all of my pigments here across my test strip, and then I'll let that dry. Our test strip made we are going to just put it aside and let it dry so after we have our test strip made we can begin to actually use these colors these pigments and our new painting utensils and figure out what we want to paint on our other sheets of paper so if you want to go outside and look at the tree down the street from you or paint the house across from you or even look at a nice flower, you're welcome to go and explore painting something that you see in real life. If you are excited by that idea but you also want to play a little bit more with how to use these utensils and how to use these pigments, you can make some nice abstract paintings. So today I'm going to show you how to make some, some paintings that I really enjoy doing and it's a technique that I like to call mark making. So the mark making is basically non-representational. It's not trying to show the flower outside or the tree by your window. It simply is creating these abstract lines and patterns in different shades of different colors next to each other to create something that is really interesting to look at. So I created a couple different pieces of test mark making or even just some beautiful pieces of art and um, each one has different patterns in it, it has different ways that I use the colors, the ways that I use the utensils, and really I was just trying to explore the boundaries of these new painting materials. Now we get to explore actually making marks on here. So thinking back to the test strip, I really liked the way that the beet juice was super vibrant, I really liked the way the cayenne was super vibrant, but I loved the subtlety of the coffee and I loved that bright yellow of the turmeric. So I'm going to use my spoon and start with the subtle one first. I'm going to start with coffee. And this, at this point, is kind of up to you to figure out how you want to explore, but I'll show you a couple ways that I like to do this. really nice to me and I'm just gonna let this dry I'm gonna lift it up gently and let it dry to the side this one it's going to be a little bit more representational
So, I'm gonna let this dry. If you wanted to frame something like this, all you have to do is just get a different piece of paper, make it a little bit bigger. If you need to cut this down, you can. And you can simply just use your standard glue or tape and put it on a frame. Another option is to take a different piece of paper or the back or front of a notebook and you can cut strips or different shapes or rip it apart and create a different image just using some of those dynamic colors and patterns that you've created previously. So this is another option on how you can finish your work. So using my fork, I actually poked some holes into the piece of paper, I added a little bit of string, and now I have a nice hanging mechanism for my new painting and collage made primarily from kitchen supplies and some recycled paper. So I hope that you all enjoyed yourselves today. I hope you challenged yourselves in new ways and discovered something really beautiful about things that you wouldn't have expected. Once again, thank you to Think360 Arts and I'm super grateful for your attendance today and I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you, bye.